Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a Halloween themed candy corn text effect with some smoke and blood spatters in Photoshop. Let's get started. So I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to make it 1280 by 720. And the first thing that I'm going to do is drag in our background texture from the project files. Now holding shift and alt I'm going to click and drag to resize that to cover the entire canvas. Then I'm going to right click in the layers palette and rasterize that layer. Then I'm going to press C to select the crop tool and just hit enter a couple times to crop that image down to fit our canvas. Now that we have our background in place, I'm going to add some layer styles by double clicking that layer in the layers palette. The first thing that we're going to do is give it an inner glow. So I'm going to set the blend mode to linear burn and take the opacity down all the way to about 5% and increase the size to about 100 pixels. And if I click the preview checkbox, you'll see that it gives us a nice subtle vignette around the edges. Next, I'm going to add a gradient overlay. And I'm going to double click my gradient and move this white stop from 100% to 50%. And then I'm going to change the style from linear to reflected. That way my gradient will be reflected in the middle of my document. Then I'm going to click the reverse checkbox and set the blend mode from normal to linear burn. Lastly, I'll take the opacity down from 100 all the way to about 15%. And that's it for our background layer styles. So I'm going to click this arrow to minimize those in the layers palette. Next, I'll use the text tool to add my text. And we're going to make that say trick or treat. And I'm going to center that in my document here. The font that we're using is called Show Card Gothic. And I picked it because it's fat at the top and skinnier at the bottom, kind of like a candy corn. I also want to turn on the faux bold option, which is going to make it a little fatter and round off any corners. Now before we add any layer styles to this text, I need to create a pattern that I'm going to use on my bevel and emboss to give it some texture. So I'm going to create a new document, and this one's going to be 512 by 512. And I'm going to fill that background with black, and click Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And I want the amount to be at 100%, a Gaussian distribution, and make sure that monochromatic is checked, and hit OK. Then I'm just going to click Edit, Define Pattern, and give it a name, and hit OK. Now I can close this and go back into my original document. Now I'm going to double click my text layer in the Layers palette to open the Layer Style dialog, and the first thing that I want to do is give it a gradient overlay. So I'm going to go into my gradient, and for the first color I'm going to choose F5 ED07 and hit OK. And I'm going to change that location to 20%. Next I'll add a new stop by clicking below my gradient here. And I'm going to make that color FFAE00 and hit OK. I'm going to set the location for that stop to 35%. I'm going to create another stop and set that location to 80%. And I'm going to change the color to a little darker orange. The hex code will be FF8A00. I'm going to add one more stop, and I'm going to make that color all C's, which is going to be a nice light gray. And for my last stop, I'm going to set the color to all E's, which is going to be an even lighter gray. Now that my gradient's done, I'm just going to hit OK. Next, I'm going to add a bevel and emboss. First, I'm going to increase the size to about 25 pixels, and increase the altitude of my angle from 30 degrees to 40 degrees. And I want my highlight set to linear dodge at 35% using the color white, and my shadow to be linear burn using black set to 25% opacity. Next I'm going to turn on the contour and increase the range from 50% to about 70%. Lastly, I'm going to go into texture, and I'm going to give it the pattern that we created a few steps ago. I'm going to leave the scale at 100%, but change the depth to just 1%. And you can see that adds some subtle texture to my text. Next I'm going to add a drop shadow, and I want the blend mode set to linear burn, the opacity set to 15%, the distance set to 3, and the size set to 15 pixels. Next I'm going to add the satin effect, and I'm going to change the color to white, and the blend mode to linear dodge, and decrease the opacity to about 15%. I'm going to leave the angle set to 19 degrees, but I'm going to change the distance to 19 pixels, and the size to 20 pixels, and make sure that I have my Gaussian contour selected down here, and that my invert checkbox is checked. Now adding that satin effect made my text a little brighter than I want, 
So I'm going to add a color overlay and using the color black, I'm going to set the blend mode to linear burn and take the opacity down to about 10% and that'll just darken my text a bit. Next I'm going to add an inner glow to make it look a little more 3D. So using black I'm going to set the blend mode to linear burn, the opacity to 45% and the size all the way down to about 8 pixels. Lastly, I'm going to add an inner shadow, but I'm going to use it to create a highlight on the top and the left side of my text. So I'm going to change the color to white, the blend mode to linear dodge, the opacity to 50%, the distance to 5 pixels, and the size to 9 pixels. And that's it for our layer style, so I'm going to hit OK. Next, I'm going to create some secondary text that goes along with our trick or treat text. So this text is just going to say, have a happy Halloween. Now I'm going to turn off the faux bold and the font that I'm going to be using is called diffused. So I'm just going to shrink that down a bit and move it into place. And then I'm going to change the color of that text to a light yellow. The hex code is EBE3AE. I'm going to set the blend mode of that text layer to color dodge and the fill opacity to 90%. Now it kind of looks like it's spray painted on the asphalt background. One thing I don't like is how dark it is in the middle here. So I'm going to go into my asphalt background and I'm going to come over here and choose my clone stamp tool. And under my brushes, I'm going to select one of these spray spatter brushes. And I'm going to alt click down here where there's no dark spots in my asphalt. And then I'm going to click and drag to paint over this dark spot to get rid of it. That way our text is a little bit easier to read. Now I'm going to go into my project files and bring in one of my smoke images. I'm going to move that to the top in my document and place it over here on the left. Next I'll change the blend mode from normal to screen to get rid of the black background. And lastly I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer and clip it to my smoke image. Then I'm going to click the colorize checkbox and change the hue to about 20 and the saturation to about 15. And that'll add a reddish orange tint to my smoke. So if I turn that hue saturation adjustment layer on and off, you can see the effect that it has. I'm going to go back into my project files and bring in another smoke image and scale it down a bit and move it into place. I'm going to repeat the same process by changing the blend mode to screen and then adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer, clipping it to my layer and colorizing that smoke to give it a nice tint of blue this time. I'm going to bring in one last smoke image out of my project files and put that on the right side of my image. And again, change the blend mode from normal to screen, add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to my image, check colorize, and this time give it a greenish yellow color. Now I'm going to add a couple blood spatters to my background. So I'm going to shrink all my layers here and go into my project files and bring in the splatters PSD file. So I'm going to shrink that down and drag it off to undock it from my window. So first in my original document I'm going to click on the asphalt layer that way when I drag in my splatters it's going to be on top of that layer. Then I'll go into my splatters document and first I'm going to drag this drip layer in and drop it in. Now I'm just going to use the arrow keys to nudge it around a bit and double click that layer thumbnail to change the color. So I'm going to give it a nice red color and change the blend mode on that to color burn. I'm going to go back into my splatters document and do the same thing with the splatter layer. So I'm going to drag it in and move it around with my arrow keys until I have it where I want it. Now I can close my splatters document and again double click the layer thumbnail to change the color and then change the blend mode from normal to color burn. The last thing that I want to do is create a new layer and you want this layer to be on top of everything else. And then we're going to choose a nice medium gray color. And using the paint bucket tool, I'm going to fill that layer with gray. Next, I'm going to come up and click Filter, Render, Lighting Effects. And you want to play with your lighting effects until you get a light that's coming down from the top and has a nice vignette around the edges. So you'll have to adjust each of these handles and move it around until you get it how you want it. Then I'll just hit OK. Finally, I'm going to change that layer from normal to overlay and change the opacity from 100% to about 35%. And that's pretty much it.
As always, everything in this file is done as non-destructively as possible, so you can make changes without having to redo certain steps. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.